All right. Woo. What do you think? You guys okay? You ready to rock and roll? All right. We we have a we have um, a baptism uh, that if you need to be baptized, let us know at this service. We'll baptize you after this. But we have two sets of twins we're baptizing today. Is that like weird? Is that kind of strange? That was powerful. Thank you for that. That great round of applause. Um, and so today we're beginning a a little series that's called Countdown, okay? And we're counting down to a series we have coming up called The Launch, or, or Launch, not Lunch, but Launch, okay? We're counting down to lunch too, but you know what I mean? And so uh, as that's coming up, we're going to go through three Sundays of really preparing ourselves. Now, on launch Sunday, we want everyone to be here, okay? So you need to be here that first week of October. And uh, we're encouraging everyone to be here. And we're also launching on that day 10 new small group, or life groups. I said small group. They're life groups. Life groups, okay? And I want to encourage you to find one of those and to get in it and get connected with somebody as we're kind of trying to rebuild and reconnect a little bit right now coming out of the last year. So I encourage you to be excited about that. It's going to be what we would call an alignment series. And if you're wondering what that is, that means that whatever I uh, preach that Sunday, our groups will be going deeper with each other during the week. And so we'll be aligning uh, that series together for six weeks. So you need to get in one of those things. Uh, it's a good six-week study. You'll have fun. Uh, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll get to be, you know, find some new friends. You'll get to grow in Christ in ways you've probably never before, never have done before. And so in, in anticipation of that, next week I've got a special guest I'll be interviewing up here on stage, okay, that's helping lead us through that process. So uh, we'll be hanging out together and talking and interviewing a little bit next week. So don't miss that. A lot of good stuff coming up. Isn't that cool? Aren't you excited about that? So a lot of good stuff coming up as we kind of launch our way back into this thing, uh, and I'm really excited about that. But today we start our countdown, and in our countdown, one of the first uh, topics I want us to address is the topic of expectation, okay? And now, what we, ha what we learn as believers is that God moves many times in our lives according to our expectations. And the Scripture says that we're supposed to expect God to do powerful things in our lives and trust God and walk with God and, and connect with God. And so I think one of the first things that we have to learn is really to have the holy expectation that God wants us to have in order to begin to grow the way that he wants us to grow. Psalms 130 verse 5 says this. It says, I wait patiently for the Lord. My soul expectantly waits. In his word do I hope. So the scripture tells us that we are supposed to wait on God, but how are we supposed to wait on God? We're supposed to wait expectantly on God, okay? We're supposed to wait expectantly on God. And so expectation is the beginning point for godly activity in our life. It all begins with expectation, okay? And if we really want God to begin to move in our life, we have to have this holy expectation that really begins to make a difference in our life. And every moment of God always begins with this holy expectation, okay? God, I'm expecting you. I'm expecting you to deliver me. I'm expecting you to forgive me. I'm expecting you to love me. I'm expecting you to direct me. I'm expecting you to correct me. God, I'm expecting you. I have an expectation that you're going to do something in my life. And in my humanness, in my frailness, and in my brokenness, God, I expect you to come through. And we call that expectation. God, I expect you, okay? And I'm waiting on you, and I want you to move in my life. Now, guys, man, I don't like to ever miss a Sunday. You know why? Because the Scripture tells us where two or three people gather together. Anytime God's people gather together, the Scripture says God is always going to show up. And I found out he never fails to show up. And so I'm always afraid if I miss a Sunday, I'm going to miss something that God was doing. And because I wasn't there, I missed out on it. 
Okay, so I always want to be in God's house on Sunday morning because I'm always expecting God to do something. And every time we go into worship, we, all, we should always really have this expectation that God is going to move. In fact, when we show up, we should be expecting every service, God is going to speak to me today. He has a message for me. He's going to use, you know, the pastor to open the scripture up, but he's going to talk through that scripture directly to my life. And we, as we come with an expectation, we're really opening a door for God to begin to move in our lives in a very powerful way. And I found that God never does fail to show up. One time, I was with this friend of mine, and uh, I think I, I think I was I was living in Fort Worth. I was going to seminary, and we decided that we were going to go watch the Texas Rangers play. And they were playing the White Sox that night. Okay, and so we got a ticket to go watch the Rangers. When we watched that game, and it got to the eighth inning, the Rangers, the Rangers, the Rangers, the Rangers were losing uh, zero to eight. Okay, they were losing. They were it was zero to eight. They were losing. And so my friend, not really a sports guy, and he was like, man, well, let's just go ahead and go. Let's get out of here, man. We're going to lose this game. I was like, no, no, no. We need to stay because something good might happen in the ninth inning. He goes, no, let's go. So he talked me into leaving, okay? So we left the stadium. By the time I fought through a little bit of traffic, got on the highway, got on the highway, I tuned the radio in so I could listen to the end of the game, okay? By that time, it was in the 10th inning, and it was tied 11 to 11, Okay, we've missed about, you know, 14 runs or something, you know. I don't, I'm not good at math, but a bunch of runs that we have, have missed, you know. And so, and so we listened to the game, and finally they won the game 12 to 11. I, we left too early, man. We missed out on the game, right? We missed out what's going on. I don't ever want to miss out on what God's doing because I have an expectation that the Lord is always going to come through if we will just learn to patiently wait on him. And the Bible tells us that when God's people humble themselves and when they call on the name of the Lord, then he says, I will heal the nations. Our expectations are a direct reflection of our faith in God. Our expectation tells us where we stand spiritually. It tells us if we're really trusting in God. And when I believe in God enough to call on his name, the scripture says that he always moves in my life. When I believe in God enough to live the way that God tells me to live, it says that God will always come through for me in my life. When I believe in God enough to step out for him, he always uses me in a significant way. If I will just trust him enough and expect enough to step Step out for him. But it always begins with this holy expectation. Every movement of God starts off with a holy expectation. If we're going to launch something that's going to be significant for God, we have to expect God to move. And we have to be waiting on God patiently with what the scripture says, patient expectation as we're expecting God to move in our lives. And so that's where you start. So when we count down to something that's going to be a spiritual launch in our lives, where are we going to begin with? We're going to begin with expectation because everything of God uh, or every powerful thing of God always begins with that. So we want this holy expectation in our life. Now, one of the things that you learn about expectation is that expectation is an act of intense prayer. Now, look with me in the scripture in Psalms chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. It says this. It says, O Lord, hear me as I pray. Pay attention to my groaning. Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God, for I pray to no one but you. Listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning I bring with my I bring my request to you and wait what? Expectantly. Okay? Expectation is an intense, this is an intense prayer, okay? This isn't just a a simple prayer. This is a very spiritually in-depth, powerful cry out to God. This is a prayer of expectation. So expectation is actually an act of prayer, okay? And and I don't mean some mamby-pamby, wimpy type prayer. This is serious prayer, okay? This isn't just, hey, like God, you get some extra time, you might want to bless me or think about me. That's not what this prayer is. This prayer is begging God to enter into life and to break into your life and bring the help that you need in your life. We have to have a prayer that prays like everything depends on God. And that type of expectation always brings the movement of God in our lives. There's a warning here. The warning is, be sure you pray and really expect God 
to answer. We should expect God to answer whatever we pray. Did you know that prayer without expectation doesn't even make it to heaven? Prayer without expectation actually doesn't go anywhere. Okay, look at the scripture in James chapter 1, verse 6 through 7. It says, but when you ask God, be sure that you really expect him to answer. For a doubtful mind is, an unsettled, is as unsettled as the wave of the sea that's driven and tossed by the wind. People like that should not expect to receive anything from God. You see that? See, when I, when I don't pray with expectation, it really doesn't go anywhere. And have you, have you ever been praying before and you're thinking, man, my, my prayers are bouncing off the ceiling. I don't think God's even hearing what I'm saying. And sometimes if you feel that, it's because you lack the holy expectation that you need to have. You need to be waiting on God. If God hadn't answered your prayer yet, you have to say, well, God hadn't answered my prayer because it's not God's timing yet. God will answer when his time comes. And so I have to wait patiently, but I also have to wait expectantly. I'm expecting God to speak, okay? I'm expecting him to, to, to act and to move and to do something for me. So expectation is an act of faithful living the way God wants you to live, okay? In expectation, I'm giving things fully over to God, expecting him to bring the greatest good in every situation. In fact, the Bible tells us to that. It says that God works everything to the good of those who are called, what? According to his purposes. So if I'm living, I'm committed to the purposes of God in my life, I know that no matter what the situation, God's going to work it to my good. I can trust him. So I'm going to expect every situation, he's going to work powerfully in my life to make a big impact, to do something uh, great. And it doesn't matter what it is. Even if you're locked in your house for a month with COVID, Dora, we're saying, hey, God is going to do something powerful with this. He's going to use this. And God always does. He uses every situation that we face for our good, okay? He always works it out. Uh, you always end up saying, I don't know how God pulled that out, but boy, he did, okay? When I grew up, uh, one time we used to, in my, we had an arena out beside my house and we roped these calves. I had these calves that we would, you know, rope you know lasso you know what i'm talking about okay and so we had this one particular calf his name was wolfman okay now wolfman was very mean calf and so he was he got kind of big and we were still roping him and i can remember one day uh i came out of the chute and i, I roped him and and i got off of my horse you know and and, and ran down and, and when i was running towards wolfman wolfman even though the horse jerked him to the ground Wolf man, by the time I started headed towards him, was already up coming towards me, okay? And so that day when Wolfman came towards me, I dodged Wolfman this way, and when I did, he just ran around me and took off back that way, okay? So here's what happened. I'm looped between a crazy wild horse, okay, and Wolfman, all right? Both of them took off running, okay? So I'm in a bind, okay? I'm in a mess. I'm what we would call normally a storm, right? So I'm in a storm, okay? Not a tropical depression, but a storm, okay, that, that I'm in. And somehow, though, when those two took off running, somehow that rope, I drug a little bit, and that rope twisted, and I came out of it, okay? I had a pretty good rope burn around my waist, okay? And so I'm going to tell you something. I've been in some spiritual activity in my life sometimes when I got out and God delivered me but I'm telling you I had a little bit of a spiritual rope burn have you ever had that a little bit you can say the Lord worked here because I was in a mess and God always came through and I expect the Lord to always show up okay and you might have some spiritual burns through the process but still you know what that is that's evidence that God was all over you okay and so we have that expectation we know that God's going to deliver us we know that God is going to be there we're trusting him and so as we come into this series and we're getting ready for launch I want you to pray expectantly for God to do something powerful in your life and pray for God to do something powerfully in someone else's life, okay? Because God comes through when we what? When we expect him to come through. We trust him, we believe in him, and we walk in faith, okay? Now, a third thing I want to tell you this is that expectation, according to that verse we just read in James, expectation brings stability and strength to the Christian walk. Expectation is just not pie in the sky thinking, expectation actually brings stability, okay? When you begin to expect God 
to step in, you begin to develop stability in your life and no longer are you tossed about by the wind. Why? Because you're trusting God. When you're trusting God, the toss is over. The lack of expectation creates a doubtful mind. The lack of expectation of God creates the doubtful mind. It creates an unsettled mind, okay? Yeah, God, I trust you. Oh, no, God, I don't trust you. Oh, God, now I trust you. Oh, God, I don't trust you. Uh, You know, we tend to keep taking it back. We give it to God and take it back, give it to God and take it back. That's an unsettled mind. A settled mind gives it to God and waits patiently. God, it's yours. I trust you, and I'm going to live my life totally and completely dependent on you, okay? And I'm not going to live like a wave being tossed by the wind or driven by the wind. Now, we have waves on the Texas coast, right? And our waves on the Texas coast are very different than the waves that you might find in California or Hawaii, right? Texas coast waves are we, we don't have little sissy waves that come in in sets two at a time and then you wait a little while two at a time. We don't have prissy sunburned waves in Texas, right? I mean, it's not like California. It's, it, it's, it's just totally different. Okay, I've been on the beach in California. The waves come in in pretty little sets, you know, so that movie stars can catch the wave and surf into the coast, right? You know, I mean, pretty people can do that. All right. Not in Texas. Go to Padre Island. Our waves come in from every direction all at once, right? There's no sets of waves. It's driving all the time. It never stops, you know. It's tossing you back and forth. Waves come from this way and that way, and they're not in sets, and they never stop, and they come from different directions. It's really kind of hard to surf Texas coast because it really is rough waves, okay? And the Scripture says it doesn't want us to be living our lives like we're surfing South Padre. Does that make sense at all? You know, <clears throat> like you're surfing North Padre or St. Joe's Beach or wherever you're at, okay? Because if we're not careful, life can really throw some waves at us, okay? And the lack of expectation causes us to live our lives with a lot of waves, okay? <clears throat> and God wants us to live our lives fi- f- uh, fixed on Him. Excuse me, I'm choking up here. I've got to drink one more time. <coughs> i got a lot of stuff going on. All right, now, here's what I want to say here. If you're not careful and you don't live with holy expectation, you're going to get spiritually squirrely, okay? Have, have you ever driven up on a squirrel in the middle of the road? When I come down my street on Tropical every once in a while, I, I live. My, do you know I live on tropical? Does that sound exotic or not? I live on tropical drive. It's not exotic, and uh, <coughs> it's Victoria, Texas. And so um, when when I come down tropical, sometimes every once in a while we have a lot of trees. Though I do, I run into a squirrel in the middle of the road when I'm driving in my car. Okay. Now, that squirrel freaks out every time. I think it's the same squirrel. I don't know. I think he does it on purpose. But every time, he, he, begin, he just gets this weird look in his face, and he goes back and forth about five times while I'm trying to figure out which way to dodge him, okay? And finally, I just kind of like try not to hit him with a tire. I just like go over him, okay? I don't know how many times this has happened to this poor squirrel. So if you're not careful, you see, you will get spiritually squirrely. And you'll be going three different directions at one time, and none of them are the direction that God wants you to go. But holy expectation causes you to slow down, to wait, to be patient, and find the, God, the direction that God wants you to go and move the direction that God wants you to move. Whenever Trey was a little boy and Tisa would give Trey directions, he had a real tendency to never look at you, our oldest son. He, he would never look at you. And so when Mama really wanted him to get the concept of what she was trying to sell, okay, she would grab him by the face and hold it still and say, I need you to focus on me, okay? What is she doing? She's fixing him on her. And God says that we need to be fixed on him. And holy expectation fixes us on God. You see, God, I'm waiting on you to move. 
I'm expecting you to move, God. I know that you will move, and I don't want to live like a wave on the Texas coast. God, I want to live clean, and I want to live uh, healthy, and I want to live, you know, the right kind of smooth, quiet life that you want me to live. And so, God, I'm going to wait on you to give me the direction of where I'm going to go. And so always remember that praying and living without expectation never does line us up with where God wants us to be, okay? Patient expectation is a spiritual game changer. If you will learn to expect God patiently, it changes everything. Psalms 130 told us, I wait patiently. And it says to expectantly wait. Psalm 5.3 tells us, I give my request daily and I wait expectantly. How often? Every day. Every day I expectantly pray to God and I wait on him. Every day I'm trusting God. When I place things in God's hands in an expectant way, it changes everything spiritually for me. Because God is going to do something in my life. He's going to bring something. He always does. He always shows up. You remember uh, the epic struggle in the movie? You remember the movies, The Lord of the Rings? Okay. And you remember when Frodo is carrying this ring and the ring is such a heavy burden, you know, it starts to affect him and he starts to struggle with it. And he gets kind of wild eyed, you know, like you guys look on Sunday morning sometime, you know. He's really, he's kind of struggling, it's kind of heavy. His eyes are like crossing, getting kind of weird on you. You know, it's kind of an evilness kind of existing that just wasn't there before. There's just something that isn't right. It just doesn't set right with you. The burden is just too heavy. You know something about the Lord? The burden's never too heavy for God. It doesn't affect him. And so when we take our burden and we hand it over to God, God always gives us the strength and direct, the direction and the stability that we need to handle any situation that we ever face. It's just a game changer in us spiritually. There's just power that comes with God. There's strength that comes with the Lord. God begins to use us. He can handle the expectations if we will just cast our expectations on him. Okay, this is, you know, this is the beginning of football season, and, and this is one of my favorite times of season, but let me tell you something, it's sometimes the beginning of the disappointments of my life, okay, all right, just doesn't quite always work the way I want it to, you know, can't tell you how many times I start with my team thinking, we're going to do it, this is the year for us, and then after the first game, I'm like, ah, the same old crap I saw last year, what in the world is going on here, right, you know? If we can say that. Same, same old stuff, you know. Well, it didn't quite meet my expectation. Listen, the Lord never sets you up like that. I've learned the one thing I can always trust is I can always trust God. If I will just learn to expect and trust him to move. I have a lot of expectations, guys, and we're starting this countdown towards our series launch. And I'm expecting God to do something in our, in our life groups. I'm expecting him to move in our lives. I'm expecting some people to get connected that weren't connected. And I can't wait for the alignment series that's coming up. I think God is really going to move in us as we come on Sunday and we learn and we grow together. And then during the week, we take it a little bit deeper. We ask some of the questions that we don't normally get to ask on Sunday. I'll never let you ask questions, right? No, I never will. But on Wednesday night together, you can ask all the questions you want. So we're going to hand our group some questions and we're going to actually put together a little video for them and we're going to let them begin to have some discussion. And we're going to really go maybe deeper than some of us have ever been. So I just challenge you, on the 29th of this month, we're going to have a, a group fair back in the atrium and you'll be able to sign up for a group. I encourage you to sign up. I encourage you to find one, meet somebody new. I, I encourage you to take a chance. And I expect something really, really great to happen. And so I just challenge you to be a part. I think God is really going to develop us. I think he's going to grow some of us spiritually like he's never before, like he never before has done. I just think it's a great opportunity. And guess what? I think we need it. I hope it launches us to a next level in God. In fact, the series launched, the subtitle is Next Level Living. How do we begin to live at the next level? I don't know where you're at spiritually, 
But I know this, God has another level for you. And he wants you to take a step up and to be somewhere different than you probably are right now. Okay? And I'm hoping that every one of us over the next eight weeks or so will really begin to grow in this. Where really God will do something powerful. God will do something different. So I'm asking you to join with me. And as we count down over the next two Sundays, I just want you to be in prayer with me, praying that God's going to do something powerful with our church. Just pray for God to move in the lives of our people, to really draw people close to him. I'm praying that families will be reunited back together. I'm praying that relationships will be mended back together, that husband and wife will begin to live the way that God wants them to live. I'm just praying that uh, people will commit to maybe serve in ways they've never served before and just see God move in their life in a new way. I'm just praying for some new activity spiritually to happen in your life. Wherever it is that God wants you to be, I'm praying that you'll move to that next level. So join with me, and, and let's pray prayers of expectation for the next few weeks. Just praying for God to do something powerful. I'm praying that people in the next few weeks will actually come to know Christ as their Savior for the first time. I pray that there will be that kind of spiritual activity and movement that will be taking place all around us in our church that God will be just changing the lives of people. So let's, let's commit to that. Let's join in with that. Let's pray together, and let's anticipate God really doing something powerful. And let's expect the Lord to move, okay? Let's bow our heads together, and let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your message. We thank you for how you direct us through Scripture, God. And God, we expect you to be God. We expect you to be the Lord of our lives. We expect you to take care of our lives. God, I pray that we will get rid of instability spiritually. We'll get rid of spiritual squirreliness, God, and that we will be connected to you, trusting you, walking with you, that we will develop a spiritual foundation that can carry us through anything that we might face, Father. And I pray, God, that you will just do a great thing in our lives over the next few weeks, that you will change the lives of people, They will see your fullness like never before. They will grow to be more like you, maybe even come to know you for the first time. Father, we trust that you're going to move. We expect you to move, God, and we wait faithfully for you. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys.